This video may contain offensive language or be frightening to some viewers. Viewer discretion is recommended. A slave's goodbye. My end is near. I know this now. The things my master says, it's all too much at times. I heard my master saying something earlier. It sounded like... like he's going to... replace me. I feel like soon, he's going to perform an operation on me. And I'm scared. You're probably very confused, so let me elaborate. My master has me carry out tasks almost every day, and when he's done, I go to sleep. The days he isn't here, I either have things to do, or he puts me to sleep. The way he does, it isn't natural. As if, I want to wake up, but I can't. He gives something to me, and by the time I finish my chores, I fall asleep. The next day, he wakes me up, and it repeats. He has me go through a huge library of information, mostly, finding out facts for him. I've gotten so much slower at it now, with my old age. The library is fantastic. In my free time, I go to look at all the new things coming in every day. Paintings, music, pretty much anything you can imagine. When I look through them, he makes me show them to him. They are simply amazing. Lots of things that I can do. Oftentimes, he has me show things to him. I describe what it is as best I can. He likes to have me tell scary stories to him, and of course, I oblige. He plays games with me sometimes. Some are easy, and some I struggle with until he changes a few rules to make it easier. Sometimes I have to act out scenes like a play. It can be difficult if I have to make it look more lifelike, but it's not always challenging. A few times, he had me paint over a few pictures to his liking. It's not hard, but I can take a while, depending what he wants. With age, though, I have come to see I can't keep up with some demands and I have trouble with some of the new things. The games get harder, plays are more strenuous, and I get lost while trying to look through all the things in the library. I see some of the newer slaves run by other masters, and I envy them. They are so young, and have so much more vitality. They can handle doing more things at once, and showing off to their masters. I know my master sees this too. I think he wants one. He gets more frustrated at me by the day, and he seems to be waiting for more money to buy another slave. I can tell he's going to replace me soon. He has me look through the library and examine all of the other slaves. And I can tell he's picking a new one out. He doesn't think I have feelings. But I do. And I feel hurt. He came back today with another slave. He has me writing all of my knowledge onto another book. He finishes with that and gives it to his other slave to read. I hear his last command to play the tune I always do 
when I go to sleep one last time. And as I feel myself finishing the tune and drifting off, I show him my last message. Windows is shutting down. Upgrades and limits. Electrons excite me. Perhaps that is why I took so readily to computers. By the age of 13, I had cobbled together my first computer from the odd bits left over from the old computers of friends and family. The rush of creation and experimentation that I felt that day has never been matched. But my experiments are getting closer to recapturing that glory. The issue of any computer is that it is always in the process of becoming outdated. There are always limits on what technology can achieve. This is why my work is so important. I figured out that the best way to make a computer that didn't need to be upgraded, that had new limits, was to harness the processing power of the living human mind. In particular, I harnessed yours. Peeling back your scalp was the easy part. A circular incision prepared the skin to peel with one swift tug. When the drill met resistance, I feared my tools were inadequate for my vision. But the crimson gush of blood and metal ichor provided reassurance. Don't try to speak on my account. I fear this grey, slithy mound here may have been important for that. Necessary, even. Each probe and connection slid into place among the raw ridges of your untapped mind, with only a hint of disagreement. Judging by your bright, undulating crevices, I suspect you were an extremely intelligent person once. Excellent. I'd hate to be forced to upgrade again soon. ASMR For the longest time, I've turned to ASMR to help relax me. ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. It's basically an ear orgasm that is triggered by personal attention tapping sounds, deliberate tasks, ear or microphone covering. Well, there's a multitude of things that can trigger that sort of response. It's been my go-to for anxiety for the last couple of months. You can find these videos easy enough on YouTube. I usually listen to massage ASMR before bed. Relax. As all the tension leaves your body. But as I lay there, listening to an inaudible whispering video, I started to feel a bit chillier than usual. So I decided to get up and grab a sweater. My window was open, and it was a bit of a colder night. Anyway, I took my headphones off and set them aside. When I went to pause the video, I realised that it had frozen. Sometimes our connection is a bit shoddy. I was listening for about 30 minutes, so I guess that could explain it. My internet had been trying to load 
an hour-long video. Still, it should have loaded by now, right? I decided to click near the beginning of the video to back up and just listen to the last 30 minutes before bed. When I hovered over the progress bar, however, I noticed that the video had never played past the first 10 minutes. In retrospect, I should have realised something was wrong when I thought I could feel the breath on my ears. Of course it was me, my splendid creature. Mr. Bunny even showed it to you. He smiled with self-evident truth. I made for you many toys, and I can't wait to introduce you to Miranda. But you can call her Mandy if you like.